Welcome again to the Weishart Family Singers Chapel Hour. Bargains. Everybody likes a bargain. But it's even better if you can get something free. So if you keep listening, I'll tell you about something you can get for free. church, 
I want to begin with today is found in Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 to 21 and including verse 33. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust 
doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And then Isaiah 55, verses 1 and the first part of verse 2. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat, yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? When I was pastoring my first church in Nobnoster, Missouri, I went to the b &R supply store. Uh, I started to say downtown, but uh, downtown was the town. <laughs> uh, but I went in and taped to the counter as I checked out, I saw this little saying. The bitterness of poor quality lingers long after the sweetness of low price is forgotten. Well, I kind of saw a spiritual application that I could make with that, and so that's one of the things I want to share with you today. Well, the definition of bargain, the word bargain varies. Uh, it can be good, advantageous, purchase, good deal, or it can be bad, inferior quality or inferior material, or it could be in between, in between discontented, reduced, or could be good or bad. Sometimes you may really get a good bargain. Sometimes a less expensive item may be more serviceable than an expensive one. Sometimes, but not always. You get what you pay for, and it may be good or bad. The quality is sometimes a poor grade. I remember I bought a crescent wrench one time, and it was marked down. It was, I thought, a good bargain. But I took it home, and I could take it and put it on my knee, and I could actually bend, actually bend it. So uh, it wasn't just a good bargain after all. Many times, you know, you go back in time, back in the 40s or way back, uh, you had to go down to get bargains. You remember, they used to have what they called the bargain basement. You know, you had to go down to get it. And uh, sometimes there are bargains in life. I think a spiritual application might be this. Many people want spiritual bargains. They want faith without works. They want blessings without discipline or obedience. They want privilege without responsibility. The principles of obedience and blessing are still in operation today. Isaiah chapter 1 Verse 19 says, If you be willing and obedient, then you shall eat of the good of the land. Jesus said, If you love me, keep, keep my commandments. 1 John chapter 3, verse 22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So there, there may be seeming bargains in life, but they end up sometimes being very costly. One thing you remember are that things of quality cost. Now, in the remarks I'm about to make, I'm going to use the word usually, because there have been exceptions. So things of quality cost. You usually pay a higher price for better quality. You usually, the things of a higher quality last longer. Uh, you usually get better service. You go to a fast food restaurant, you uh, say, I'd like this and this and this, then you go around and pay for it, and 
you're on your way. Maybe you go to a good restaurant, you sit back, make yourself comfortable, they come around, they take your uh, order and uh, wait on you all through, all through your meal. In the spiritual realm, God gives, but Satan takes away. God lifts up, but Satan pulls down. God loves, but Satan hates. God sets you free. Satan puts you in bondage. God promises things that will last for eternity. But what Satan promises lasts only for a short time. In Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24-25 is talking about Moses. And it said, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Pleasures of sin only last for a season. The pleasures of God last for eternity. In the natural realm, you have confidence in a name, usually. The name usually indicates a tried and true product or a proven product. The name usually indicates a better quality. The name usually indicates that something or somebody can be trusted. But with bargains, it's usually no returns. Sorry, no refunds. All sales are final. But with good quality products, there is usually a good return policy. With bargains, the law of sowing and reaping applies in the spiritual realm here as well as other places. Many think they can get by with less. They may say, oh boy, this isn't so strict. Or, oh, I can just barely make it in. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 13 and following, that every man's work will be tried by fire. So be careful how you choose. I remember a story I told about a, a highway that had been built but it had a certain curve in that highway that had not been elevated properly and there had been quite a number of wrecks on that some of them resulting in fatalities and it pointed out that the man that was responsible for the bad work on that curve ended up in a mental hospital uh, there was another illustration it was kind of humorous there was a builder who used poor quality building uh, a house. He used poor building materials, but then his boss gave him the house. So you have to be careful about uh, things you choose. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23 says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. These workers were doing works, but they were not being, doing works that were based on God or upon Jesus and his words and his teachings there. Well, when you're poor, you look for bargains. When uh, my wife and I were attending college and seminary, we looked for bargains a lot. We uh, weren't making it that well. And when the cost of living goes up, people look for bargains. But we can never think in terms of bargains when it comes to spiritual matters. Go back to Isaiah 55, verses 1 and 2 the first part, that great invitation. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsts, come to the waters. He that has no money, come, buy, eat, come, buy wine, milk, without money, without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Somebody said, boy, that sounds great. That's a real bargain. Well, don't be so sure. Verse 1 says, it's free without money, without price. 
Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and you labor for that which satisfies not? Uh, the message translation of the Bible says, Wherefore do you spend your money for junk food and cotton candy? That doesn't really satisfy you. Free? But is it really? There's kind of a paradox here. Salvation is free, but it's not what we call a bargain. It hasn't been marked down or reduced. Go back to that definition that I read in the beginning. It, a bargain is something that is acquired at a price, not necessarily cheap, but at an, at that's advantageous to the buyer. It's not of inferior worth. It costs God the best heaven could offer, his very own son. It costs Jesus his life's blood. Salvation doesn't cost us money or worldly rewards, but it will cost us a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. Psalm 51, verse 17. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. And then Isaiah 50, 55, 6 and 7, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call up him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. People may look for an easier way. They may follow those who preach a watered down gospel. But go down to that little saying I saw taped to that counter. When it's all over, the bitterness of poor quality will linger long after the sweetness of low price is forgotten. There was an old song. I haven't heard it in a long time, but the words went like this. Rusty old halo, skinny white cloud, secondhand wings full of patches. Rusty old halo, skinny white cloud, and a robe that's so woolly it scratches. None of that for God's children. We're going to have robes of righteousness. We're going to have a crown that fades not away. We're going to have a, a new name written down in glory. And we're going to have eternal life with our Lord. Everything that God offers is top quality and is free. But we have to go to the cross to get it. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care on him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom may he, he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions that you're going through are accomplished in others in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us into eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you've suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. God offers you life eternal, totally free, but it costs the life of His Son. But it's free to you, and you can accept it today. Father, if there are any listening to this message, maybe they've tried some things that seemed good and seemed cheap, seemed easy to to do, but they've been delusioned, Lord, and they're not happy with what they receive. Oh, Father, I pray that today you'll help them see that this free gift that God offers, this free gift that God holds out, that we can accept and live happily ever after serving Him, is all they have to do is reach out and accept it. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Him and give their lives to Him and begin, begin living for Him for the rest of their life. And Lord, if there's any Christians, Lord, that maybe have settled for second place 
and nothing has turned out just right. Help them, Lord, to get back to the cross, to that which lasts forever, we pray. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today for The Chapel Hour with Rev. Russell Weishart and the Weishart Family Singers. For previous programs, please go to YouTube and search for The Weishart Family Singers Channel. If you're a minister, teacher, or student of the Bible and would like to access Rev. Weishart's messages, outlines, and sermon notes, please go to thechapelhour.blogspot.com. And of course, one of the best ways to stay in touch with us is on the Weishart Family Singers Facebook page. We want to thank everyone for finding us, for your encouragement, for subscribing to our channel, and for hitting that little like button. We look forward to seeing you next week on The Chapel Hour.